I'm gonna be entirely honest with you. When I first got my hands on this weapon, it felt like one of those weapons that you actively try to farm for, only to vault it after it's been crafted. And it is because of that, and well, luck I suppose, that I was able to craft this weapon 3 days after the season started. And it was only during a game of Iron Banner Rift last week, when I was told by my friend that using this weapon with high caliber rounds made his opponent flinch so hard that he couldn't shoot back. This made me take some time to pause and consider that maybe this weapon was in fact more deserving of a proper review. As mentioned in my other review videos, there will be some perks that will be kept constant, such as the stability masterwork or intrinsic, polygonal rifling, and high caliber rounds. I was using backup mat for extra rounds, but in theory, targeting adjuster and Icarus grip are fine choices as well. I will stress that since this is a precision frame, there was no real need for either arrow hit break or the counterbalance stock. With all that said, here are the timestamps for each of the rolls in the video. While the timestamps are being shown, I would like to mention that I've collapsed a bunch of roles to be reviewed together as I felt that I kept repeating many things about the roles with overlapping perks in my previous videos. Doing this allows me to shorten the video and make it more concise for you guys. Threat Detector and Elemental Capacitor This is a very strong perk combination that is both very reliable and very easy to use. The added stability and handling with Threat Detector goes a long way to help the somewhat average stats of the gun. But by adding on elemental capacitor, you can essentially have near max stats for the stat that is governed by the respective subclass, at least when talking about light subclasses, meaning you are looking at near max stability when using void, near max handling when using arc, and near max reload when using solar. Here's a breakdown of what elemental capacitor does with the various subclasses. When using arc and solar respectively, you get an increase to handling and reload speed by 50. And when using Void, you get an increase to stability by 20. For the enhanced stats, well rather, the enhanced elemental capacitor, you get an additional 5 to what I've mentioned earlier. So that means you get additional 55 handling when using Arc, additional 55 reload when using Solar, and additional 25 stability when using Void. Unfortunately, the outlier here, Stasis, is rather difficult to quantify the benefit in its base or enhanced trait, which states that it moderately controls recoil and boosts movement when ADSing. But frankly, the moderate recoil control is not exactly necessary, as this is a precision frame, and for me personally, I felt that the Stasis subclass did not add nearly as much value to the gun, compared to the other light subclasses. Threat Detector Adagio This role is decent as each kill gives you a 7 second window enhanced trait as opposed to a 6 second window base trait of 30% increased damage and 20% decreased rate of fire. This makes it a 360 RPM weapon instead of a 450 RPM weapon, essentially changing your precision frame auto rifle to a pseudo high impact frame auto rifle. Now granted, you still have the added benefits of the 450 RPM, which is, you know, more predictably vertical recoil. But that aside, it increases the precision damage from 29 to 38 and the body shot damage from 18 to 24. Now I think some of the clips on screen kind of illustrate this better than I can say in words, but essentially after killing some guy, there is no delay between Adagio procking. It procs instantly, you don't have to reload or do any fancy thing like that. All you have to do is kill some guy and move on to the next guy. This is why I have backup mag on since I have more ammo in the magazine so I can quickly adjust from killing one guy to killing another guy. And they definitely won't expect it because now you're doing more damage than you know they can guess although you're shooting slower. So technically the time to kill isn't really affected but it definitely catches them off guard. So it is definitely worth the shot. However, to me, it's not exactly necessary and I'll discuss it a little later on in the video. Fragile Focus Adagio and Fragile Focus Elemental Capacitor This role is unique in the sense that it gives you an increase to range, plus 20 to the stat, until you take damage, which returns after not taking damage for 5 seconds, which is the base trait, and 4 seconds for the enhanced trait. It definitely has the ability to catch people off guard with the momentary increase in range, but having it be an unreliable way to give range makes it 
favor, in my opinion, weapons like shotguns or snipers as you tend to not take damage until you secure the kill and not necessarily weapons that you are using to engage people at the middle of the map because you're bound to take damage unless you're doing an excellent job at flinching with high caliber rounds. Regardless, this role can still perform as seen on Eternity right here which is one of the longer range maps and it still works like a charm. Although I have to admit sometimes the fragile focus is well, broken because I took damage but other times it definitely has the increase in range which you can see and it definitely does benefit. Air Assault Adagio and Air Assault Elemental Capacitor. Now unlike what I said with the Austringer review, it is comparatively much more forgiving to use Air Assault on an auto rifle because you would still be doing substantial damage even if you don't focus on headshots. Whereas for hand cannons, you lose significant damage by choosing not to go for the hit. If I were to be entirely honest, I still don't like Air Assault. But it definitely feels better on higher RPM weapons like SMGs and auto rifles that are more forgiving. So I would give this a shot. However, I would say that Air Assault doesn't really pair very well with Adagio because as I just said, well, it favors higher RPM, for me at least. And if you want to proc Adagio and slow your rate of fire down, you can basically see the effectiveness kind of drop a little bit because like again, you're not really there to be doing damage at least, that's not what I really do. I'm not aiming for the head, I'm aiming more for body shots so I can still flinch the guy. And with Adagio, less hits in the body means less flinch and more likely that I will die. Well-rounded Adagio and well-rounded Elemental Capacitor. This perk is situational, but I personally love it since, as you can see, I'm playing as a Titan. I'm going in with the mini hammers to make myself radiant and this really plays into the perk as I am striking my target with a charged melee. And after all, I can still collect my hammer. So in a sense, I am getting the benefits from well-rounded and making myself radiant so I'm doing more damage as well. Of course, it's rather risky because you're running in to basically proc this ability. But sometimes it's definitely worth it because for me, the stability buff you get from this is in fact noticeable and of course you get bonus to range and handling as well and it's substantial you definitely will feel it so it's not as if like you know it's just increase in stability and that's just pen and paper you will actually feel your weapon getting more stable now this is a side note here it actually does work with the solo 3.0's new healing grenade that means that if you were to engage someone mid gunfight and you're now well running away because you're low you can throw the healing grenade on yourself and now not only do you have restoration and you are healing, you have the bonus to well-rounded which means now you have better handling, stability and range for re-engaging your target. So that way, even after you get hurt mid-gunfight, you can still very comfortably re-engage. For PvE, this weapon has a variety of excellent options, though I feel it may not necessarily shine in PvE with its lower fire rate. But nevertheless, as this is a review, some good choices would be 4th time to charm and focus fury for increased damage while simultaneously returning ammo to the magazine. And you can also use threat detector and surrounded which have good synergy with one another where surrounded allows you to gain increase in damage when you're surrounded by 3 or more enemies and threat detector also proccing when the enemies are near so you are surrounded of sorts. These perks can be mixed and matched around as well, so don't be afraid to try out what you really like. After all, in the end, it is what you like that matters. Frankly, the verdict for this auto rifle is a lot harder, since each role felt decent in their own right. But from all my testing, Adagio and Air Assault come to last. Not because I dislike Air Assault, but because of what I mentioned that I feel Air Assault works better for high RPM weapons, so slowing it down doesn't do the combination any benefit. Personally, I've tried Air Assault on something like Callus Mini Tool and it definitely works like a charm. I'm still hitting a lot of hits in the air, even when I'm low. So just for a reference, Callus Mini Tool has a 900 RPM and it's basically the fastest RPM weapon you have in the game and it is very promising in fact with the ability to use air assault very consistently, at least to the way I like it. But feel free to disagree with this because, well, that's just my take on air assault and adagio, mainly favoring weapons with higher RPM. Following that role will be fragile focus adagio, 
fragile focus elemental capacitor, an assault and elemental capacitor, well rounder and adagio, well rounder and elemental capacitor, threat detector and adagio, with the winner of the lot being threat detector and elemental capacitor. In my opinion, Elemental Capacitor is the role that outshines Adagio because of the flat stat buff it gives to the weapon. Don't get me wrong, I love Adagio for this weapon, but it doesn't feel necessary for it to be good, since the strength of the weapon lies in its ability to consistently flinch and stagger your targets rather than the flat damage buff to secure kills. Additionally, Threat Detector is good because there is no need to invest in it, unlike Well Rounded, with its only restriction requiring targets to be close. But when using an auto rifle, you aren't fighting at super long ranges for that to matter, so threat detector works fine. However, if you are the type who is insistent on using auto rifles at the furthest possible range, well rounded may suit you better, especially knowing that healing grenades can proc it, giving you the slight itch early on in battle, or allowing you to catch your opponent's mid gunfight, especially since you can use it, heal yourself, get restoration, and re engage mid gunfight with the added stability, range, and handling. The outro here will be a bit longer because I have some stuff to address. All for one, I think this would be one of the last few reviews that I will do. Not because I'm going to, well, stop uploading or anything, but because for the time being at least, I have burned through all my Ascendant Alloys, so there is no real way I can review all of these new weapons that you may suggest or weapons that I want to review with the enhanced perks without it. Although frankly, if you guys would rather I do a thing whereby I review the weapon without the enhanced perks and basically tell you the slight differences the enhanced perks give you, I can still do that because you know there's no ascendant alloy for me to use and burn through. So mainly I'm gonna take some time away from creating review videos and move on to other maybe crucible highlights and whatnot because during that downtime I'm still trying to farm for my ascendant alloys back so I really hope you understand that personally I started with like I think 24 ascendant alloys and all of that has been burnt and I only have one so basically when I started the beloved review I had 24 because well I had 10 and then I had 14 in the reserves from all my three characters playing Nightmare Containment. And because I've basically farmed and gotten all the opulent weapons that you can farm from Nightmare Containment, at least. The four weapons which are Beloved, or Stringer, Drang, and, well, Callous Minitool. I have not really been playing Nightmare Containment that much, and I've been mainly trying these weapons in Crucible. And as a result, well, I don't have any more Ascendant Alloys to really use. <laughs> Regardless though, well, moving forward, I will still do these review videos, and feel free to suggest what weapons you would like for me to do in the comments down below. And personally, for those who haven't really watched to the end, I will still add this as a comment, so don't worry, I'll still pin it so everyone can still see. Personally, i also like to thank all of you who have joined me and those who have, well, followed me along all this while. And I really cannot express how grateful I am and how thankful I am that all of you have really enjoyed the content that I've created regarding these reviews. Frankly, my inspiration for this was that there were many different content creators talking about what is the god role and whatnot. And frankly, I felt that for a review, you definitely need to try everything. And I think that's what gave my review its sort of charm that it had. And I think that's kind of where we are sitting at right now. Because most of the comments that you guys have mentioned are really positive and they feedback on like how they give my own opinions on, well, the, the weapons that I'm reviewing as well as all the trick combinations that I've tested in Crucible. And as a result, I'm pretty sure that's what most of you actually really like to see. And frankly, I had not really tried that before, especially since I did my beloved video. Personally, I wasn't seeing as how it would draw more people to watch my content. I only reviewed it because that was my own personal thoughts on beloved and since I was lucky enough to actually craft it, that was what I was really going to review. Well, I suppose there's nothing much to really say here. Again, a casual invitation, feel free to suggest anything you guys would like to see in the comments below and i thank you guys for watching this far for any of you who have and i'll see you in the next one